Hey guys, Brian here from Better Chest Training. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a positional chess quiz. And I'm gonna be using three positions that I got out of the book, Can You Be a Positional Chess Genius by Angus Dunnington. This is an older book, and I've actually had the book for a little while, but I never actually went through any of the tests. So recently on stream, I did test number two. I had done test number one a while ago. Uh, I did test number two. And uh, first, let me give you a couple uh, thoughts about the book, and then we'll get on to our quiz. Uh, the book consists of 10 tests, and each test has 15 problems, sort of five easy ones, five medium ones, and five hard ones. So in today's uh, quiz, I'm going to be doing uh, one easy one, one medium, and one hard one. And um, then it also it gives you a full explanation and scoring. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to give you the three positions and I'll give you a suggested time that you should spend on them because uh, I, the positions get deeper and a little more complicated as you go. Uh, so uh, I like this book. I'll talk a little bit more to bo about the book as we go through the solutions. But um, this is a good way to improve your positional chess because you're actually taking what you know currently and trying to think about it. It's engaging your active learning which will help you to understand the concepts more when you actually do read about them as you look at the solutions. And uh, I've found, at least in a couple tests that I've done, that the, um, the examples, the problems, are well-selected from a, a bunch of different themes. And we're going to go through those, uh, at least from the three here. I don't want to do too many, partly because I don't want this video to be too long, and also because I want you to uh, get the book uh, I have the link down below in the description. Okay, so here is the first position, and this is from um, Kamsky, uh, Gita Kamsky against Kasparov from the Manila Olympiad in 1992. So it is black to play, and he gives little hints in the uh, before, and he basically said, what should black play? This one's pretty straightforward. So uh, what I would suggest for this one is take... Uh, five minutes, pause the video, and then come back for the next problem. Okay, this is the second puzzle of our quiz. And here, this is from the game uh, Bikhovsky against Smirin in Beijing, 1991. It's black to play, and here is the, uh, the clue. A fairly even position. Black's isolated e5 pawn and white's control of the e4 square suggesting an edge to the first player. How should black proceed. And for this one, I would actually give yourself 10 minutes. And even if um, you think you have the solution, I would encourage you to try to use as uh, much of the time as necessary and try to push deeper. You might get the initial concept, but in the uh, book itself, and also for your chess, you should try to calculate as far as possible and look for possibilities for both sides. So pause the video, uh, give yourself 10 minutes, and then come back to the video for the third position. Okay, for our third and final puzzle, uh, I give you this position. This is from Boris Gokul versus Vladimir Kramnik, Nov Novgorod, 1995. It's black to play, and here's the clue. White's bishop is not good, and his pawns have seen better times. How did black transfer his knight and attack the enemy sea pawns? Now... This one uh, is the hardest of the puzzles, and it is from the advanced section in the test. Uh, I would give, your, give, give yourself 15 minutes. And again, even if you think you get the first move, try to calculate further and further and try to find white's best responses and your responses to that. Try to really come up with a best line of play for black. Okay, give yourself 15 minutes, pause the video, and then we'll go to the solutions. Okay. Here we are back at puzzle number one, and I'm going to show you the solution. So hopefully you found, uh, of course, this knight is being attacked, so we need to maybe do something about it. Hopefully you saw that queen to h5 check um, with just gets met by um, just gets met by this bishop. Uh, to f2, and then after you move the queen, you're going to lose your knight. So that was something that I saw when I first tried to solve the puzzle. But So this knight needs to be moved, and you might think that here, knight to f4, bishop takes f4, pawn takes f4, 
Queen takes f4, just loses a pawn. But in fact, this is very powerful for black. Uh, so the first move is uh, knight to f4. And the idea here is that if white were to take, which he didn't in the game because he saw this, that this bishop is very powerful. So let's see what happened in the game. And again, this is, um, this is, let me turn back here. This is from uh, Kamsky, Kamsky versus Kasparov. So uh, after, uh, let me look here, knight to f4, uh, white played his bishop back so that it couldn't get captured. And then black started with his counterplay on the queen side. Queen to f2. Knight to d7, covering the b6 square. Knight g to e2, b4. Knight to a4, a5. And finally, knight takes f4, e takes f4, bishop takes f4, and then knight to e5. And here you can see black has very good compensation. This knight is very well standing very well. This bishop is eyeing this diagonal. And uh, overall, um, white did very well. Uh, a couple more moves were given in the solution. Here at castles, uh, knight to c4, bishop to e3, knight takes e3. So here we could see that if we compare the minor pieces here, uh, we could see that the bishop on c2 is pretty... Um, useless and as this knight is as well does not have any many squares but these two bishops are just going to do quite well in the coming position so uh if you got the idea of f4 and specifically opening that long diagonal give yourself five points so five points is the maximum you can get for this puzzle okay our second puzzle um is this position here with black to move and here, uh, the answer is, the first idea is e4. So one of the things we want to do a lot of times in uh, isolated pawn positions is try to liquidate this pawn or use that pawn to create uh, either a weakness in our opponent's camp or to open a line. And in this case, we are uh, basically sort of interrupting white's control of this e4 square. Uh, during the... the puzzle I was thinking of when I was first solving this myself I was thinking of preparing this move with something like uh, rook to e8 but the problem there is that white is able to blockade it with e5 and then if we were to take then this pawn is just going to become a weakness for the rest of the game so got, having gone through that analysis uh, I did also select e4 and so now knight takes e4 Wins seems to win a pawn, but again, knight takes e4, queen takes e4. This is what happened in the game. Queen takes e4, and now pawn takes e4. Now we have this knight to e5, and now you can just see here all of the these weaknesses that are coming up. Now, black has to be very careful, so this is where I hope you uh, calculated ahead. Uh, rook to d5 is played, and here... Uh, we have to be careful because um, of moves such as um, if knight takes c5 now, uh, this is okay. But after knight takes c5, uh, white has some weaknesses of his own that he's going to have to deal with. Okay, so, so that would be okay for uh, white. So instead, he hits white with his check first. And after king to c2, he actually plays king to f6. Because um, the other risk here, well, he's centralizing his king for the end game. But also this knight maintains control of d7. And this is a good principle to know. Because white has all, these weaknesses are not going away. So we don't need to rush to try to win back the material. We have to make sure we shut down all of, um, all of our opponent's counterplay. So, for example, if we went for uh, this pawn right away, rook to d7 check would give white actually the superior game. He's going to win this pawn. This pawn is weak, and um, this would not be great for uh, great for black. So here, after king to c2, king to f6. 
Okay, so um, here is the scoring for that. Uh, eight points for the general plan. And so the general plan being to push e4 and can take, take control of the e5 square. Okay, so you get eight points if you got that. If you calculated as far as king to f6, give yourself a two additional points. So maximum points you can get on this puzzle is 10 points. So I uh, hope you got that. So let's go on to puzzle number three. Okay, for our final position, uh, which is worth uh, 15 points if you get it all right, uh, I hope you took the full 15 minutes to try to solve it and try to calculate as deeply as possible, but let's get right into it. So when I did this, there were a couple, there, I looked at a few positions. I was not able to get it right on the first try. And the idea here is that uh, Black, White has his own threat, which is to double rooks on the seventh rank. So we need to be very careful about that. So Black actually has a way to uh, maneuver his knight and while with tempo by playing knight to g5, hitting the rook so that he doesn't have time to double. And so here in the game, by the way, if you saw uh, rook takes h5, knight to e4 check, then very good for you. But in the game, rook to g7 was played. And here, uh, knight to e4 check, getting another tempo, king to f1. And here, knight to d6, attacking the pawn. Now, uh, one thing to note here is that taking the pawn right away here uh, is a little dangerous. After rook to d3, knight to d4, rook d to d7, um, white is going to be able to um, basically draw here with these double rooks. Okay? Going back to the game, knight to d6. So... Bishop to b6 was played here. Uh, and here, of course, the idea is that if we take, then the rook will take, and then the danger is pretty much over for white. So from here, black played rook to f7, blocking this rook and um, basically solving that problem. So in the game, Rook takes f7, knight takes f7, bishop to d4, and now the knight calmly comes back to d6. c5 was played, and here, knight to c4. Attacking this. Now, there's some tactics here that we need to be aware of, and basically, um, we, can protect, we can protect this pawn, but uh, he chose instead to move his king up. And that way, there's no... Funny business with any checks or anything like that. Um, so uh, in this position, b5 was played, supporting the a4 pawn. Um, and I think the general idea here is that if we take this pawn right away, then rook to a1 equalizes. Because after we move our knight, let's say to c4, or even c2, then white just gets the pawn back. Okay, so instead, b5 was played. c takes b6 on passant, c takes b6, bishop to f6, and after b5, we could see here that uh, black just has a big positional edge, and he went on to win the game. Okay, let's do the scoring uh, for this puzzle. Basically, it's 10 points if you saw the maneuver to d6. So that would be here. So if you saw knight to g5, to e4, to d6, give yourself 10 points. If you were able to delve further and saw the um, bishop to b6 idea, which is right here, give yourself an extra two points. Um, going back, if you saw that it was a bad idea to take on c3, give yourself two points. And finally, after this, if you saw rook to f7, give yourself a final point. So the maximum score for this puzzle is 15 points. And uh, when I did it, I uh, didn't score any. So hopefully you were able to score more than I did. 
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you took the time to try to figure out the, the puzzles. These were some interesting positions. Uh, as for the book, uh, Can You Be a Positional Chess Genius by Angus Dunnington. I, uh, even though it's an older book, I think um, so far uh, in the, the two tests that I've completed in it, the positions are well selected. And most of our puzzle books are tactical puzzle books. So having these positional puzzles that quiz you and give you good instruction and annotation in the solutions is um, something that we should take advantage of. So I have the link down below. It is an Amazon affiliate link. So if you choose to purchase the book from that link, it will help the channel and it is much appreciated. Uh, if you check out over here, I have uh, some more um, chess uh reviews if you want to check those out of a little playlist and if you are not subscribed to the channel hit the button right below my picture in any case i hope you guys have a great day and i'll talk to you soon